From natural defenses to strategic locations, these countries have repelled countless attempts throughout history. Join us as we uncover the reasons why these nations remain unconquerable. If you're interested in military history or geopolitics, this is a must-watch. Can any country truly conquer these ten nations? Watch to find out. Books have taught us that we have been invaders and have been invaded. Since ancient times, man has fought to establish his supremacy and expand his territories and dominions. The true conquest of a country is more than just invading its land borders. To truly conquer a country, an invader must subdue its people and crush their will to fight. In this video, we address the term impossible to invade. Australia invading a country is much more complex than it was centuries ago. This is due to the impressive increase in population, more advanced defense technologies, and the existence of international treaties and alliances that restrict such military operations. Failing to comply with these restrictions leads to international conflicts. However, over time, there have been some countries that have never or almost never been invaded. These countries have an incredible immunity that kept invaders at bay in the past, and continues to do so even today. We do not consider the use of nuclear weapons in this list, but rather a powerful military invasion. Australia. The fact that Australia is an island country has both advantages and disadvantages. When it comes to an invasion of its territory, Australia has much in its favor. 70% of the country is covered by an endless expanse of desert, with no flora or fauna for thousands of kilometers. A country without sufficient resources to sustain a massive army for months or years will be lost in no time. Additionally, Australia's nearest potential enemy is Japan, which is 11,000 kilometers away. Should an enemy army survive dehydration, exhaustion, and the numerous threats of the Australian terrain, it would face the Australian armed forces, which are perfectly well equipped, armed, and trained. Canada. Canadians are peaceful and kind people, but that does not mean they are weak. Canada's main defenses are its geographic location and size. It is the second largest country in the world by area. Due to its location, Canada is a very cold country, with temperatures reaching minus 30 or minus 40 degrees Celsius in winter, which is a disadvantage for any invading enemy. The only way to invade Canada is through the territory of the United States. But historically, Canada and the United States have always been good friends and allies, so that would not be an option. Canada has an army capable of protecting its territory with very advanced technology and well-trained soldiers. Switzerland, famous for its chocolates, watches, knives, and fierce neutrality. Its best friends and allies are the world's largest superpowers, which deters anyone from starting a war against them. Switzerland has not participated in any international conflicts, including World War I and World War II. Its mountainous location and a defensive plan known as the Swiss National Redoubt have been key to maintaining its independence. Today, Switzerland has a small but well-funded army and is one of the most armed countries on the planet with 45 guns per 100 people. India. It is one of the largest economic powers in the world and has the fourth most powerful army. To the north and east is the Himalayan mountain range, which limits land invasions. India has been arming itself for years, both on land and at sea. Its army is well prepared with a large number of soldiers, religious fervor, and a population of over a billion people. North Korea. It has one of the largest armies in the world, with 700,000 active troops and 4.5 million reserves. During the Korean War, not even South Korea and the United States could subdue North Korea. Its relationship with China makes an invasion even more difficult, as China acts as its bodyguard. United Kingdom. The only way to invade the United Kingdom is by crossing the English Channel, which is a daunting task. Its army, technology, and NATO membership make it practically invulnerable. Great Britain has demonstrated its military capability throughout history, defeating the Spanish Armada, Napoleon's fleet, and the German Luftwaffe. China. It is a massive nation with a huge population and a strong economy. It is surrounded by extreme climates and oceans, making invasion difficult. China has stolen foreign technology, keeping it on par with its rivals. Its workforce and allies like Russia make it even more formidable. Japan. It is one of the most advanced and powerful countries with a strong economy and a significant military budget. Despite its small size, Japan has never been invaded. It has an advanced naval fleet and an alliance with the United States that ensures its defense. Russia. It is the largest country in the world, and its climate has been a natural defense against invaders like Napoleon and Hitler. Today, Russia has a powerful army with a fleet of tanks and a solid air force. Its allies and vast geography make invasion extremely difficult. United States. It is the largest military superpower in the world, with an annual military budget of $600 billion. It has an unprecedented military infrastructure, with thousands of tanks, planes, and armored vehicles. Additionally, it has military bases in allied territories and a highly motivated military personnel. The geography, 
unlimited resources, and size of the United States are its greatest advantages. The answer to the trivia about which nation has invaded the most countries in history is Great Britain, which has invaded almost 90% of the planet. However, the United States is considered the most difficult country to invade due to its enormous military budget, infrastructure, technology, and armed citizens. The main reason it is impossible to invade the United States is that any invader would not only face the U.S. military, but also the 330 million citizens armed to the teeth, even more so than the armed forces themselves. It is estimated that in the United States, there are 102 guns for every 100 inhabitants. So surprisingly, there are more guns than people. Most of its citizens have been avid shooting practitioners for decades, which means we are not talking about novices, but about people with many years of firearm practice. Isoroku Yamamoto, Commander-in-Chief of the Imperial Japanese Navy during World War II, once said that the continental territory of the United States could not be invaded because there would be a rifle behind every bush. We invite you to share your opinion. Leave us your comments and subscribe for more historical analyses. Thank you for following us to the end. If you are new to our channel, subscribe and follow our social networks in the description. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it.